Hello from the Bean Life Science Museum. My name is Nathan and this is Discovery Drawing. Today we're going to learn some things that can help you make drawing animals a little bit easier. Some tips and tricks that can make a complicated thing like drawing an animal a lot easier for everybody. Animals are hard to draw. They're all a little bit different and most of them move around a lot. The nice thing about the Bean Museum is all the animals here hold really still. We're going to talk about how basic shapes help us to draw things from the inside out. If we think of basic shapes, we think of shapes like circles and squares, rectangles and triangles. Now these shapes by themselves don't look a lot like animals. I don't look at a square and think that looks like a hippopotamus, because it doesn't, right? It looks like a square, it doesn't look like a critter. Let me show you an example. If I take a circle and kind of stretch it, I can make an oval. Here's an oval. And then if I add a little triangle on the end, and then I put a rectangle right here, and a rectangle right here, with a circle and a rectangle going back to my first oval, we have a bunch of shapes grouped together. But what does that start to look like? It almost looks like a turtle because turtles are made of shapes, just like everything in the world is made out of shapes. Even you're made out of shapes. Your head is a nice circle. Your neck is a rectangle. Your body and torso is also a rectangle. So if we look at the shapes that things are made out of, it can make drawing them a whole lot easier. Let's work together on drawing this Canada goose here and see if we can find the shapes that build him and if we can draw them. We start with the biggest shapes first. If we start with the biggest shapes, it makes it easy to find where the right proportions are and how the smaller shapes fit into the whole animal. What do you guys think the biggest shape is? Is it his head? I don't think so. What about his feet? I don't think so either. His bill? Not very big. But his body, this chest and these big wings that come down. That's the biggest part of him. And we're going to show that with a shape. If we look at it, it's a nice big oval. So let's start with a nice big oval to show our goose's body. There's an oval. Now remember, if your shapes aren't perfect when you draw them, that's okay. That's what an eraser is for. Erasing is totally allowed. That oval doesn't quite look like a goose yet, does it? So let's look for some more shapes that can help us build him. If we look at our goose again, I see a couple more shapes. I see two more shapes on either end of our oval that kind of make up the rest of his body. I see his tail feathers and his wing feathers that come down in this kind of triangle shape. And I see his big circular chest where all of his heart and, and chest muscles are that help him to fly. For his tail feathers and his primary feathers, the feathers on the ends of his wings, we're gonna use a triangle. We're going to come down from the top of the oval to a point and from the bottom of the oval to that same point on the right side because that's the way we're looking at it. We're looking at a profile from this side. His chest is kind of a big circle that kind of sits in the oval. So I'm going to overlap my oval with a nice circle right here. Show where his chest goes. Still doesn't quite look like a goose, but don't worry, we're getting there. His chest makes a nice straight line that meets up almost exactly with the end of his bill. Let's draw in that line so we know where the end of that bill needs to go. Let's draw a line up from the chest, just straight up along the top of his body. We know that the end of his bill should go right about there. So that tells us that his head should go just a little bit farther back, right about here. Now that we know where his head goes, let's add in his neck. His neck is kind of an S shape, but because we're drawing it this way, his neck is kind of a backwards S shape, like that, right? So we're gonna start from the top of his head and curve down till we meet the top of his chest. Then we're gonna do the same thing on his chin. We're gonna start on the bottom, right there, the bottom of our circle. We're gonna curve down until we meet the front of his chest. And now we can see that nice 
S shape that he's got in his neck. Geese, like this Canada goose, have webbed feet. They have three toes and in between their special skin that makes it webbing. It makes it easier for them to swim, to paddle along. We don't see this webbing when he's turned sideways. All we see is the stem of his leg and the sides of his feet. We're gonna draw his feet from the side. Like I said, we see the stem of his foot, which is a nice rectangle shape right here in the middle of his body. And then we can tell from the side that his toe is a nice line that comes out right about here, and the middle toe comes out right about here as well, making almost a triangle shape. On the ends of these lines, we can put his little claws. And then let's put in the webbing in between his toes, just like that. We're starting to look more like an actual animal and not just a jumble of shapes. Let's add in his bill because no goose is complete without a bill. His bill is a triangle shape that comes down from his forehead. So from the top of his forehead, let's come down into kind of a soft, curvy triangle shape. And let's take it from that dot back up into his chin like that. He's missing an eyeball. He's missing his feathers. He's missing what else? his big tail and wing feathers out here, and he's missing the markings that make him look like a Canada goose and not just a white goose or a black goose, right? Before we get there though, let's erase some of our extra lines. Remember, erasing's okay, and some of these lines, we don't need them. Now what we have is what is called a silhouette. This is kind of what the shadow of a goose would look like, okay? And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna kind of fill in the silhouette with textures and feathers and his other pieces like eyeballs and things like that. Let's start off with his head. Let's start with that eyeball. His eyeball should go right about in the middle of his head from his bill right about there. So let's make a nice circle for his eyeball. Remember, it's got to be small. Geese don't have giant eyeballs. Let's give him this nice white stripe. Canada geese have that white stripe up their cheek. It's kind of a weird shape. It's not quite a circle. It's not quite a rectangle. It's kind of a curvy rectangle that comes up his cheek and curves and comes back. So let's put that in. We'll come up his cheek, make a curve, come back down towards his neck. Our Canada goose has big wings. Geese wings are really powerful to help them fly long distances. And we can see that there's almost a line running that divides his body feathers from his wing feathers. We're gonna start up here by his chest and we're gonna make a curve up and then we're gonna make a curve down and then straight across to the end of his tail. Our goose is missing something that all birds have. He's missing his feathers. We could go through and count every single feather and draw every single one in teeny tiny marks like this. We're trying to do something that just suggests or shows that those feathers are there, but we don't have to focus on every single one. We're gonna show where the dark feathers of his neck stop and the light feathers of his chest and body start. So we're gonna draw a line across his neck right here. Now when I say a line, because they're feathers, I'm gonna draw not just a hard line like this, but rather I'm gonna draw soft, fuzzy lines. And what I mean by that is a fuzzy line is different from a hard line that a fuzzy line is made up of little tiny lines. Kinda of like that. And we can see that even though they're a line straight across, there are a bunch of little lines going the other direction. His feathers come down his neck and into his body, so the little lines should go this way, showing that that's where the dark feathers and the light feathers meet. These feathers come down his body and are almost curvy like this. So we're just gonna come down his chest, adding in little feathers that kind of overlap and cover his body and chest. All these feathers on a goose's body are important to keep him warm. Geese live in some cold places, like Canada, and it's cold there, so these feathers keep them nice and toasty. We need to make our goose look even a little bit more fuzzy, and to do that, we're gonna take our pencil and make these hard lines on the outline around his body a little bit softer. There we go. Let's do the same thing from the top of his head down to his back. Let's make some little lines 
Just kind of coming down his neck just to fuzzy him up, just a little bit. There we go. Now his wing feathers are what build up a lot of this end of his body. These big long feathers are called primaries and they help him to fly. They're the longest feathers on his wings. A feather is kind of like a leaf. It has a stem in the middle and then it has a shape around it. But that shape is not hard. It's nice and soft and fuzzy. It's got almost like little hairs coming off the edge and from the middle. So we're gonna fuzzy up our feather and we're gonna show those little feathers, those little hairs coming from the stem to the outside edge. His wings come up, these feathers kind of come up and leave a big space for these ones down here. So let's add that in, that kind of slash. I'm gonna come up from right about here, up towards his back. Then we're gonna start adding in our feathers and they come down in this triangle shape and we're just gonna kind of fill in this empty shape with those feathers. We can put in the stems in the middle and we can show some of those little fuzzy lines that make up the feathers. These feathers are a lot like the ones on his chest and neck, but they're bigger, they're much larger. So instead of making little lines like this, we're gonna make bigger ones. Okay, there we go. The next texture our goose is missing is the texture of his feet. Bird's feet are covered in scales, not feathers. To show those scales, we're gonna take some lines and just go down his foot and his leg, just like that. And then down his toes, that outside toe, and that middle toe. And that just shows the texture of his feet. On a goose's bill, it comes down and gets pretty narrow. My goose's bill is a little too thick, so I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna erase. Erasing's okay, remember? So I'm just gonna erase his bill a little bit, and then I'm gonna come down and make it a lot narrower. And then his bill kind of comes down and hooks down. Not a big hook like an eagle or a hawk, but a little hook that helps him to grab grass and weeds. So we're gonna make that little hook on the end. We're gonna come back up and meet back into his chin. And then we're gonna show this shape right here, this kind of crescent shape where his beak meets his head. A goose's eye is much darker. Instead of having blue and brown eyes, their eyes are almost black. They're really dark brown. So we're just gonna fill in our eyeball with a black circle, but we're gonna leave one little white spot that'll help show that our goose's eye is reflective. Eyeballs are wet, they're moist, and they reflect light. So I'm gonna come into my eyeball and fill it in, but I'm gonna leave that little white spot just to show that my goose has nice, moist, happy eyes. If you have crayons, if you have colored pencils, you can color your goose, your goose all you want. You could go in here and show this nice tawny brown color and the cream color of this white stripe, but I don't have any colors today. I just have my one black marker. So I wanna show that his neck feathers are nice and dark. To do that, I'm gonna fill in his head and his neck where the feathers are dark. I'm still gonna remember that he's got feathers there. To show those feathers, I'm going to do what I did here. I'm going to fill in with little tiny lines. I'll start up at the top of his head and just kind of fill in. I can also fill in these feathers because they're a little bit darker. I'm just going to fill them in going the same direction as the other little hairs. I'm just going to put in a little few more to show that they're darker than the other ones. His beak doesn't have any feathers on it, but it is kind of shiny. So I'm not gonna just color the whole thing black. I'm gonna leave a white spot on the top so I can show that his beak is nice and shiny. I hope you had fun today learning how to draw this Canada goose by using basic shapes. And I hope the next time you draw an animal, you remember those basic shapes. It doesn't have to be a goose. It can be a lion. It could be an elephant. It could be a giraffe. All those animals have great shapes. And if you're looking for them, you can find them. Thanks, and I hope to see you again soon.